And here I'm running at the same time 10 views on a single machine performing object detection and tracking tracking objects with different object detection models on all the different views in real time on this single desktop device. Hi, welcome to this new video. This is Sergio. Now you are going to learn, we're going to see how to set up a system to run multiple cameras for detection and tracking. So if you want to track any objects, defects and so on, on a single machine and in real time. We will see what are the benefits of such system and solution and also we'll make this very simple and modular so that the implementation doesn't take too much knowledge or debugging or any complex code. What are the benefits of such system? First of all, you can optimize to run everything on a single machine. So you don't need to get rent expensive server solutions on the cloud. For example, here I'm running on a consumer desktop device, 10 plus cameras. And if I improve a bit the hardware, I can run even much more than that with a high frame rate. And with this, you can build production ready systems. If you want to do some traffic monitoring to count the vehicles, uh, people counting or some industrial solution where you want to identify the facts either from different products in different locations from a single machine or from the same product by putting multiple cameras so that you can have a very high precision detection of the defects. And this will allow also you to scale everything without complexity. You can add multiple cameras with minimal code change. Now let's start by seeing some simple solution, how a simple system works, and then we explain the workflow of more complex solutions. Let's now understand the difference from a solution that can run a single camera and solutions that can run multiple cameras. This is what I mostly see, the sequential single thread mode. And I saw this also in some components that they were running system for multiple cameras, and this is not very optimized unless you have only one camera. How does this work? You have a Python code. This Python code for detection and tracking, what does this do? This takes the frames from a single camera. It passes them through an object detection model, an object tracking model. It detects tracks object and shows everything on the screen. Let me show you an example of a code. Here is an example of a basic Python code that does that. We load object detection, in this case with YOLO, we load our video, and then with a while loop, we get frames one after the other, we perform the detection, and then we show the bounding boxes, like the position of the object detected and so on, and then we show everything on the screen. This is a very simple basic script that can run for one camera at the at time. Now, what if you want to run multiple cameras with such system. What I see, what most of the people do is take this code and replicate. So one, and we run the same code for different cameras. So three, four, and of course, as many as your machine can handle after on a desktop machine, after like six, uh, seven, eight videos, your RAM will be, RAM memory will be full and also your VRAM of the graphic card will be Full, probably even before than that if you have a small graphic card. Does this system work? Yes, it works. It works without any problem if you have like some, some good hardware, but there are a lot of cons with such system. It's very hard to maintain because we have one code that you need to adapt for different scripts, for different videos and so on. And then it's not also user friendly. So if you to run many cameras each time, you need to run a specific code and so on. So this is what you might be doing or what many people do. If it works for you, that's fine, but that's not the best way to work with system or multiple cameras. And we have two ways of working with multiple cameras. Let me show you two different versions. I mean, we have more ways, like the system can be optimized and advanced and customized for each solution. But in general, I see two ways that we can approach this one. One is multi-training where we have one single code. This single code will load videos from different cameras. So we have a specific thread for each camera to get the videos. And then we have a single model that takes all the frames from the same camera. So we send all the different cameras at different times, different process, different threads, they will send everything to the object detection model. This will be working in batches, so it can take multiple frames at the same time. For example, it can take 16, 32 frames at the same time, and then it can show everything on the screen. This is an example with multi-trading, how we can 
work with multiple cameras. There are some limitations to the system, of course, because it can run only with a single model. So if you have a model for detecting people, then all the cameras will be using people detection. If you want in one to detect people, in the other one, you want to detect vehicles and so on, then you cannot do that because it's only one model that's performing the detection. There are also some other cons with this one, like if a camera has a slower frame rate and so on, then the other camera needs to wait. So it's okay, but it's not uh, very efficient. And then we have the multiprocessing one, and we're going to see an implementation of this one today where we have one single Python code, and then like this will run different processes for each camera. So each camera will have its own process where we load the video for the specific camera, and then it, we will load the object action model for that specific camera, and then at the end we uh, bring everything together to show that on a single screen, or they could also be on a separate screen. So you can you can have a lot of freedom on how to uh, display this. And this is a way to get a system that it's user friendly. You can manage a single script to handle multiple cameras. It doesn't require as much as maintenance of managing multiple Python scripts. And then this is also more resource efficient than the other solutions I showed you before. There is maybe a pros, a, a cons that when you load multiple models, then also you need more VRAM memory. So that's something that you need to take into account. And now we're going to build this quickly from scratch. I'm going to show you like the main core high level of how we can run such system. Now we're going to write the code first for multi-training where we work with a single camera and then we put everything into multi-processes so that we can run multiple cameras at the same time. I'm going to be very quick because I explained this in other videos, so check for speed up object detection in, by four times, something like that, on the PySource YouTube channel. If you want to get the sources that I'm using, everything is available inside the AI Vision Academy. Please check all the links and information below in the description. And now let's start. So from engine, we're going to dot multi-trading tracker we're going to port multi-trading tracker now let's load load the multi-trading tracker mtt equals multi-trading tracker then let's load the camera we'll load camera video mtt dot start cap thread and now let's choose a video now that we're getting the tracker in the video we can put everything into a while loop and let's just get everything from the video so while true we have red frame equals mtt.getFrame, and that's it. So let's import CV2, the OpenCV library, so that we can show everything on the screen. We have CV2.im show frame frame, and then the key is equal cv 2wetk one because we need a key event to keep the windows open. And then if the key is 27, which is the S key on the keyboard, we break the loop. And then we can release everything. Release resources, mtt.release. And of course, as I said, I'm going very fast because I don't want to spend much time in this one that I explain more time. So let's now run this one. Now we have here the video running in real time. So you see it's quite fast. It's processing a lot of frames. It's not doing anything except showing everything on screen. So that's why it's also so fast. And now we can perform the object detection. So let's implement here the object detection so after we get this we can load an object detection model mtt.start detection thread uh, we're going to use an optimized version of the model everything was already explained in the videos about speeding up detection batch size and everything is to have the optimal speed and now with the detection thread here we can uh, show show detections how does this work? We take the frame, we pass this to the model, and then we get the bounding boxes, the class, what is that object? Is that a car, a vehicle, and so on? And also the confidence score, how confident is the model about the attack? So we have bounding boxes, class IDs, and scores. And now we can draw everything on the screen. So we look through all of them. Here, as you can see, the copilot is suggesting everything because it's some basic object detection code, nothing more than that. We get bounding box, the X, Y position, the name, then color, and then we show everything on the screen. Now, this is as before, but now you see that in real time here, we have object detection, we have the person detected, we have the vehicles detector, the cars right here on the left. So everything is working fine. Now, 
what we need to implement object tracking because we need to track the object to associate a univocal id to them so after the object detection we load object tracking mtt dot start tracking thread we use oc sort and then right here we instead of the detection we get the tracking mtt dot get tracking in addition to the scores we have also the object ids and now let's show the tracking so object id so a univocal id for each object now this is the tracking as you see maybe it's not so clear but we have id for the red car id one this gray car id 203 we have we're keeping the d on the same vehicle so we know if they move we know which one it is object tracking that's what object tracking is now what do we want now we we have pretty much the object tracking on a single video what if we want to run this on a sync on for multiple videos on separate processes it's very technically not so complex we just need to import from python multiprocessing import multiprocessing since we want to use this on different videos the best thing we can do is to put everything into a function so def and we can call this track video something like that and then we can put all that we have right here into this function so on different process we can run this track video and we can use this multiple times since we are running this from the function so we need to pass all the information so the video instead of having it here we need to pass the video path to the function so you see now the function takes the different arguments so the video path the engine path if we want to use different models now we're using this yolo 11 into tensor rt format then if we want to use different trackers here we pass the name of the tracker and so on now right here we have this function that we created and it's the one that can run object tracking and object detection everything that we've seen so far and it takes all these arguments and we just since this can be le left as default we just need video path and engine path so like the model that we want for object detection to run everything so now we're going to implement the multiprocessing which is very simple we start by defining if name equals main because since we're running this multiple times we need to avoid that the code uh, reruns itself so it's uh, we this means that we can run this from the main window that we're using the code and the multiprocessing can use the code without interfering with its own code i hope this makes sense uh, if now we want to run just a single video we can just say track video and here we can put the video path and then the model so models i have the yolo 32 batches in the tensor rt format so if we run this one uh, we just get the processing of a single video and till here we know everything so far what we do now is we use multiprocessing so wave multiprocessing dot pool we define how many processes processes let's say equals four this is going to limit the number of processes that are run at the same time because even if you have 20 videos your hardware has some limits so you cannot run them at the same time so you want to keep a maximum let's say 10 at a time when some is finished it will go to the next uh, process and video in case we have video if you have cameras then you need to put as many process of cameras because if you want to run in real time you need to run everything with the machine i have it has 32 gb of video ram of ram and 24 of video ram with the rtx 4090 after 10 11 videos it starts to uh, stop it starts to run out of resources so i can run 11 probably 12 or maybe around 15 with a smaller model but you might have less resources than this then put less if not you can add more you will just test and see what is the limitation so as pool right here we have pool dot star map and here we need to define what function we're going to use function so we have this track videos and then the jobs so the jobs are all the jobs that we that we will use so the job are all the videos or cameras that we want to process so we can create here jobs equals and then we can put our list so here we define on between parentheses 
uh, each of them. So the first one, and we put all the arguments. So we put video path, engine path, and so on. See here, for example, I put now a path of one video and then a model for processing that video. Then here, if we want, we can specify the tracker and so on. So like this, because tracker is the third parameter and then batch size. Now let's keep everything as default. Let's add the second video. So we put a comma and then we open again parentheses and then we can put a new video right here. And with two videos, if we run this now, it's going to run two videos at the same time. So you see now we have one here, second here, and they're running at the same time. Now I have six of them, but I am uh, the limit of processes is four. So if we run it, we have one, two, Okay, we have four, as you see here, we have four at the same time. When one of them finishes, it will open the next one and so on. So you can put a very long list and everything will be processed one after the other. You can take also into consideration the resources that this is using all your machine. Now I have 100% CPU usage, 55% around 60 of graphic card and 24 gigabyte of RAM memory. So I'm getting close to finishing my resources here. Now, before concluding, you can also make this a bit more advanced and put everything into a screen. Code is slightly more complex, complex of that, so we will not get now into the code, but I, I can show you at least what's possible to achieve. And here, for example, I'm running at the same time 10 views on a single machine performing object detection and tracking tracking objects with different object detection models, even if we're replicating the same, but we can use different object detection models on all the different views in real time on this single desktop device, which is incredible. And this can be optimized in different ways by choosing the right hardware. For example, here, the my bottleneck is the CPU. You see, I have CPU 100% usage. That's very soon. Probably it's with this video it might be lagging while you watch this. And to achieve this, we can get better CPU. And you see, GPU usage it's only 60% still. So I could fit many more frames with the graphic card that I have now, which is the RTX 4090. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got a lot of valuable information. If you want to learn more, if you want to get resources to learn computer vision and you want support of a community, you can join the AI Vision Academy. All the links are down below in the description. If you have any questions about this video or about what you will see next, please post a comment below the video. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.